everybody want to hit, wants to hit their irons straight, and I don't blame you. It's very frustrating when your irons are going left and right of the green. There's two parts to this, really. Number one is getting your ground contact correct. It doesn't do me to hit any good to hit it straight if I'm chunking them and thinning them. And that comes from momentum of your hips. I'm gonna talk about how you should use the momentum of your hips. You can almost imagine there's a, a grandfather clock kind of hanging from your belt buckle here. And I'm gonna use the momentum of that swinging back and through to time out my low point. And once I get this rhythm, it gets really easy to hit the ground in a consistent spot over and over. And number two, I'm gonna talk about how to get the momentum of this face to release so that you can square it up. Let's jump right into the ground contact piece. And like I said, most people, if they have consistent ground contact, are using the momentum of their hips and their body to make that happen. Let me give you a great example of this. I can just take with one hand, my left hand only, and I can swing and use the momentum of my body, and I can consistently hit the ground in the same spot. So I'm exaggerating hitting down a little bit more than I probably would with a normal iron shot, but you can see four, five, six swings in a row, I'm hitting the ground, they all started right there, the divot was in front every single time. It's really not very difficult once you get down that proper momentum. So let's get into it here. I want you to imagine that you have a grandfather clock, a pendulum, hanging from your belt buckle. And we're gonna start this pendulum swinging to the right and then to the left through the shot to get all the momentum moving down and through, making that ground contact in front and your entire body's momentum working down the fairway. Now, when I see players that struggle with ground, talk, ground contact, when I see players that struggle with that, they're usually not using the body momentum correctly. A lot of times I'll see players, again, imagine you have this uh, grandfather clock pendulum, this big pendulum, 5, 10, 15 pound pendulum hanging from your belt buckle. A lot of players will try to stay left in the backswing, not really get a shift to the right at all, and then they'll fall back to the right. So there's no real momentum of this moving through the shot. The best players, what they do, is they start with a very early shift to the right. So as my hands get to here, that's as far to the right as my weight is gonna shift. So it's very early. Some players may even start with about 60% of their weight on their right foot, that makes things easier. So imagine as soon as you start your swing, you're gonna get those hips and the momentum of the hips going to the right very early. It's not gonna happen late. At the time I'm here, it's completely to the right. That's as far to the right as it's gonna go. Then from there, I'm gonna begin my weight shift to the left to start that clock, kind of that, that pendulum moving back to the left. Then I'm gonna make my downswing. As I make my downswing and hit through the ball, all the momentum of this pendulum or my hips should be moving through the ball down toward the target like this pendulum is getting slung out toward the target. So it's that early shift to the right, then I begin my shift to the left to make all the momentum start moving to the left, then everything swings through together and flies out toward the target. Here's another way to feel that if you can't quite visualize the pendulum right away. Imagine my hips, you're just looking at my, my hips, my, my belt here. In the backswing, I'm gonna start my belt buckle and my momentum moving to the right very early. From there, I'm actually gonna have a little swing down as that pendulum would be swinging down and back to the left. I'm actually gonna squat down with my legs a little bit, let my knees bend slightly, that's all really good. And then I'm gonna post up to my front leg. You'll notice when I finish here, I have all that momentum moving through the shot. My belt buckle is now facing the target. That pendulum would be thrown out toward the target for my hips and my right foot is off the ground. If you finish and you're here and your right foot is still on the ground, you'll know that you're gonna have trouble with this because what that's telling me is you're not getting that momentum through the golf ball, you're cutting the momentum off and kind of falling back and your, your body and your arms are gonna be working against each other. It's gonna be really difficult to create that consistent ground contact. So now that we have this idea, let's grab a club here and I want you just to visualize that momentum to the right and then everything's being, the momentum is being slung from your hips down to the left. If I had that tied to my belt buckle, there's an early shift to the right. And then as I let that momentum swing on through, it's almost like if this was that pendulum, it's gonna be thrown down toward the target. And I'll talk about what those two sticks are here in one second. That's gonna be our face contact to get that nice and square. So 10, 15 practice swings, get the feeling for that. And then from there, 
we're gonna let that momentum carry this ball, clear, carry this club in our body in synchronization down toward the target line. So I'm gonna split these two orange sticks and then we're gonna talk about how to get the face squared up every single time. All right, hit that one nice and solid. You can see the divot was coming down in front of the golf ball. And again, all that momentum moving through the shot. If I go left and then fall back right, that grandfather clock is wanting to swing away from the target as I'm trying to swing toward the target. If I go left and try to stay left, there's just no momentum there. So I want all the momentum from my body moving through the shot so it's working with my hands and my arms. Now piece number two, is your club face. This is a great drill. Do not skip this part. This is one of the best things you can do to get laser-like accuracy with your irons. I like to put a little stick. I'll do 30 or 40 yards in front. I'm just using that as a frame of reference to see where I'm hitting. Ideally, you might have another two sticks, another 40, 50 yards past that, 100 yards out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out hitting some little chip shots with a middle iron toward those sticks. What's gonna happen here is I wanna feel the momentum of this face. And I wanna allow the momentum of the face to roll on over to get the ball to go more left or to draw. I wanna feel the momentum of the face staying more open or toward the sky to hit more of a fade. Most people don't struggle with this. Most people struggle with this one. So again, I'm gonna feel like my hands are rolling over and that club face is going more down to get it to draw. I'm gonna feel like my hands are staying more open. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start out with just some little 30 and 40 yard shots. And I'm just gonna be aware, was my face a little open? So let me go ahead and hit one a little bit to the right. Again, I'm gonna have the momentum of my body, but now I hit that shot a good 10, 15 feet to the right of where I was aiming. If I do that, then I have to get the momentum of the face squaring on up a little bit more. That face was too much this way. It needed to have the momentum rolling on that way. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. I could go into infinite detail of exactly how every piece of the body has to move to make that happen. But I find that most players, as they just feel the momentum of the club, they can get all that to happen more easily. So on this one, if I hit one to the right, I'm gonna feel that club rolling on over, the momentum of the club rolling on over. I'm not manipulating it to roll it on over. I'm letting it release on over. And that's gonna straighten that out. So let's go ahead and try one again. There we go, a little chunky, and I actually overdid it a little bit and went to the left. If I do that, I'm just gonna gradually work back and forth hitting these little shots until I can hit these little 40, 50 yard shots with a middle iron and get them to go pretty straight like that one, right through the middle of the sticks. At least from my reference, it was through the sticks. Probably looked like that from the camera too. But I'm just gonna keep on hitting until that happens. And then I'm gonna go one step farther. So if that was a 40 yard shot, I'm gonna go 60 or 70 yards on this next one. And every time I miss to the right or to the left, I'm gonna simply let the momentum stay a little bit more open, or I'm gonna let the momentum of the club roll a little bit more closed until I straighten it out. And I just do a ladder drill here, 40 yards, then 60, 80, 100, all the way up to your full swing with this club. And you're gonna get an awareness of this face that you've never had before. And more importantly, you're gonna get the momentum of the club working squarely through the golf ball. Another misconception there is I wanna to try to hold this straight. Well, that kills all the momentum. Every single good player, that face is releasing. And if we put this on a tool that will measure that, usually anywhere from 1,000 degrees a second all the way up to 2,000 degrees a second. Everybody's face is releasing or closing through the shot. That's the momentum I'm talking about. I don't wanna hold it and force it straight down the target line. Now there is one piece that's missing from this. Most players have way too much loft on their club, meaning that when they let the momentum roll on over, they're letting the club shaft be vertical like this. We need some forward shaft lean, and we need that face to be square when we have that shaft lean. Now there's a great drill for this called the tennis racket drill, and I'm gonna talk about how to square up that face, get this shaft lean to work with the momentum of the club so now you can really compress it. Using the momentum of the face is gonna help you to hit it straight, but properly using the wrist angles is gonna help you to really compress it, get the shaft lean, get the ball smushing against the face where it feels like a million bucks. 
I'm gonna play a preview of that video here in just one second. All you need to do to see the full video to get that tennis racket drill and learn how to use the wrist just like the pros is go ahead and click the card that pops up on your screen. If you don't see the card, don't worry, go down to the link below in the description and that'll give you instant access to that video too. Once we learn how to use these pro wrist angles and start really compressing it, not only is it gonna go straight, not only are your divots gonna be good like we talked about here, but now you're gonna hit it super, super solid at the same time. Let's go ahead and get started. You don't wanna miss out on this tennis racket drill. Player problems, we're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane, as I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be